Hi, everyone, and welcome. It is Saturday, the 6th of October, 2018, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. Today in our room, we have Alyssa, we have Christine, Dawn, our special guest, Dante Singh, Jim Charles, back from Machu Picchu, Jessica, Liney, Michelle, Reinhardt, uh, Star or Steve, Steve, here we go, and Temple, and then myself, Kara Newman. So just so everyone knows, uh, just a little housekeeping in front. This is a Saturday Human Colony webinar. If you would like to become, or we would like to invite you to become a member of Human Colony to help support us with all the webinars that we do and all of the wonderful uh, programs that we have. On Friday nights, we have the free channeling practice group, which is free to everyone. You can join it by going to the Hukalo practice channeling group in Facebook and you just join and then once a week on Fridays they do pra channeling practice uh, with a group of uh, I think five or six sometimes more and they're working on learning to channel so if you want to learn to channel you can do so also on amazon.com you can buy the book called from the galaxy with love the lightworkers handbook and it's written by jim charles and by max rimple it is a combination of several years of channeling from jim charles and it's a wonderful book it's available in hardback paperback and also as a download so and also an audio book so you can join that and i'm going to mute paula who just came in hi paula Liney, i'm muting you Okay, nice. Very nice. Thanks, Paula, for the musical interlude. <laughs> and did we lose Dante? We lost Dante. Son of a gun. And Paula, I can't mute her. There we go. Hello. There he is. He's back. <laughs> yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. Perfect. Okay. And for everyone who isn't, a, isn't a, a subscriber on our YouTube, just somewhere I think right down there is the subscribe button. So if you hit subscribe, you will uh, get notifications every time we do a, a new video. So Dante, there Hello. you are. Hello. Welcome. Thank We've you. got a full room today. How are you? Yeah, great. Amazing. <laughs> great. So you're, you're actually in Amsterdam right now. Yes, I am. Yeah. So could you just, because the people here don't know you and, and so it would be great if you can kind of give, you know, an introduction of who you are, your journey and, and, you know, how you kind of gotten to where you are right now. Um, I've known you via Facebook for several years and watched you and, and I've seen you traveling everywhere and doing beautiful um, cacao ceremonies and beautiful channelings and um, yeah. I think you have a beautiful energy, but for the people here that don't know you, why don't you just uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was born in Reading, Pennsylvania, and I had a spiritual awakening around 19. Uh, actually, it kind of culminated when I turned 19, and it really brought me to change things. Um, and I was really drawn into the path of yoga and energy work and there discovered a lot about the 2012 phenomena, including books written through Pleiadian channels. And that's when I decided to go to Mexico in 2012 and do a lot of ceremonies with shaman at this gathering in Palenque. And I was drawn to Guatemala after that. I wanted to go all the way south to Peru. So I started there working with a cacao shaman and another shaman who is doing other different healing modalities and that shaman took me in and I met community and just kept practicing what I was doing um, Reiki and other energy healing modalities and these cacao ceremonies and a lot of deep healing work and I was really drawn to travel and I always came back to Guatemala as I knew that's kind of where I was learning for those years and over time as I led the cacao ceremonies it kind of bridged me more into channeling as I was listening to many channels and tuning into what they were saying and applying it. And it, yeah, it brought me to the point of connecting with the Pleiadians in my own way. And I've been channeling them for a little over two years now. Okay. And so primarily like 
for people who don't know what a cacao ceremony is, why don't you explain that? Because it's it's really special. And uh, if yeah. anyone in their area gets a chance to do it, or if Dante's in your area, you should do it with him. But why don't yeah. you tell what that is? So chocolate, um, it was a sacred plant to the Aztecs and Mayan, Mayans in Central America. And over time, they kind of lost the tradition of it as a lot of the ancient culture was kind of taken away. Um, and this chocolate that I've discovered with this shaman has a different kind of property and you drink a very large amount of it. So, I mean, in a, a chocolate bar, it's maybe 40 grams itself and it's mixed with other things, but this is 40 grams of pure chocolate. And it's also a very specific kind of chocolate as there's many strains of the cacao plant and some contain more caffeine and the one that we're drawn to work with has more theobromine and is less of a, it's still a stimulant, but it's a lighter stimulant and it has a lot of different hormones in it that contribute to this really good brain balance. The chocolate's a master plant, so it works with all of the other plants of the plant kingdom and it's a synergist. And when you combine it with other plants, it brings out their properties. Though the myth about cacao that the Mayan and Aztec people held was that it was a gift from the god of the sky, Quetzalcoatl, and that this plant was this treasured thing of the gods that Quetzalcoatl, who was a tri trickster figure, kind of brought to the humans to help them have a taste of that, that divine essence. And so the name Theobroma cacao literally means food of the gods. Um, and there's other Mayan stories that when there's great despair and disharmony on the planet, the chocolate emerges from the rainforest in order to help people reconnect with the natural world and reconnect with their own heart. So the chocolate really increases your heart rate and it gives this kind of deeper focus for meditation. It's really good for therapies and for connecting, though people combine chocolate with any different um, variety of healing modalities, especially ones involving sound and singing. And the ceremonies I do are, yes, sound healing. And I also have brought, brought to combine it with the channeling and as well, giving people an open heart space to kind of really explore what they're processing in the moment in a safe group space where they can really express and expand. And I mean, chocolate, like who doesn't love chocolate? It tastes amazing. And <laughs> is chocolate it, is maybe it... <laughs> it's a little bit more bitter, um, yeah. but the potency of it makes it all, all the more worth it. Theobromine is the is the chemical that's been been identified as the love uh, chemical that when you eat chocolate you, that gives you that overall well being feeling and and that's yeah. why people go to chocolate when they you know are feeling down or they need to lift their spirits but this is like a supercharged amount of that from what you're yeah. saying yeah yeah. yeah. I, I talked to a guy actually who said he did a, a ceremony with you, um, uh -huh. and uh, his and he's he's in Amsterdam and he did it with you I think two years ago or something. He said he couldn't sleep for like two days because he was so like elated <laughs> from all the high energy and everything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Two two days. <laughs> I'd never heard that one before. And myself. he said he had to work the next day, so he was really really like. Like how am I gotta sleep? I gotta sleep, you know. And he couldn't sleep. Yeah. So but anyway. So you're channeling the Pleiadians. Do you channel a yeah. specific do you, the group that you channel? Do they have a name? Do they just go by the Pleiadians? Are they They started to call themselves the Pleiadian Council? So my okay. feeling um and what they show me is that like I have specific parallel incarnations that connect with me, but okay. it's not just one parallel incarnation it's kind of a, um, a group effort and they are a group that's more kind of oriented towards group thinking and group consciousness okay so i think every one of the pleiadian beings has this link into the bigger consciousness of every other pleiadian right. in that particular group and there are these are linked to the more humanoid pleiadians who share our ancestry with the anu our anunnaki where there are many different Pleiadian groups that are less humanoid and they still have a Pleiadian frequency and they're connected with these humanoid Pleiadians. Though, um, yeah, it's um, the channeling I do is an evolving thing. And especially when people bring in their own star connections, 
um, there's a kind of blend of frequencies that comes through. Right. So do you, are they, are they on a ship over earth or are they in the Pleiades now? Is it, do they have a location? Are they physical, non-physical? How do they, how are they working? They're quasi-physical. Okay. So they, I mean, they can shift in and out of realities very quickly and okay. move through time and space. Okay. Yeah, it's a less okay. dense reality, but it's not entirely non-physical, though there is an aspect to their consciousness that is just pure light and energy. Right, right. That, that sounds sort of like what Theos is. Theos has form, but they're not actually physical. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like they have a silhouette, but they don't have an actual physical uh, yeah. contained body. Yeah. Yeah. They do have there a any... physical in body, but it can because they connect to that higher level of non-physicality, they can change it very easily. Okay. So it it's less um it's less fixed, but it's still somewhat physical. Okay. And and what primarily do they talk about? Do they talk about everything or what is their what is their primary uh, message for people? It's sort of about the extraterrestrial con I mean I think they're coming with an agenda that is to help people get used to the idea of extraterrestrial life and yeah. prepare our energy systems so that the Pleiadians and other extraterrestrials can eventually come here and it's a lot sooner than we think from what they say um, though in with that in mind they're also helping people to get themselves clear to get a clear idea of who they are and how to change their life, how to work with universal laws, how to change their beliefs and how to really connect with their own higher self. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of the key, isn't it? That, that until we get into that space, that's what will allow the contact. Yeah. 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 So that, I think everyone got excited when you said it's sooner than we think because yeah. <laughs> one of the biggest questions, one of the biggest questions is when, when, when. So do you have, uh, do you have a time or no? Uh, my feeling in, is in that around yeah. approximately. Well, it's kind of like those of us who are really focused on integrating these energies will be the right. first to receive the hybrid children and mm -hmm. So, I mean, the contact will continue to happen in this telepathic way, in this channeling mode. And the Pleiadians tell me that, like, this isn't going to be what I'm doing um, throughout the duration of this process, that once contact does occur, the need for channeling is going to be much less. So mm. the hybrid children are going to come to these kind of high vibration containers. And from there, those who can receive the hybrid children will be doing a lot more work to kind of get the rest of the collective ready for a full contact to occur. So I think the hybrid children starting yeah. to land around 2027. 20, um, yeah. So we have 10 years. It could be sooner. It could be longer, depending on how we do our work. And so the hybrid ch ch children will be physically landing, like walking around on the ground, physically landing, or will they still yes. be energetically? Okay. Okay. Um, um, though they can hop back and forth. And that's, I mean, it's, it's hard to say exactly. I don't entirely know, though my yeah. feeling is that they don't even need ships to arrive here, that because of their quasi-physical nature, they can kind of manifest into reality. And some people have seen them for like short periods of time. And mm -hmm. then they were so shocked that like, oh, there's a child sitting next to me in my room that the ch child just disappeared out of the reality very quickly. Right. So it's more like we're, our, our vibrational octave has to come to a higher plane in order for us to actually meet them. And that's the thing is that the vibration and the dimensionality of the whole earth is shifting to be a higher dimensional planet. Right, right. If we look now at what's going on, it's like we're at this sort of, yeah, it's, it's like everything is bubbling up and it um it has to obviously you know to order to make that shift into that next level it's, we're in that sort of tumultuous moment of reckoning i would say and, and and now you've got sort of the last gasps of the stuff that will keep us from moving forward and 
You yeah. can see that purging out a little bit. So do you things. have hybrid children or do you have hybrid children? Do you know of them or? Yes, I've contacted them sometimes. Yeah. And, and when you said about them landing and the ones coming quasi physical and all that, is that going to be all the hybrid children or just the Pleiadian hybrid children? Is that many races? How does, how's that working? The Pleiadians when they're aren't hybrid, as much hybrid hybrid in the foundation program. Um, Say that one more time. I missed the, that. What? From what I gather, the Pleiadians are not as much involved in the hybridization program. Okay. They're more kind of working with frequency and they, I, they say that they will eventually come. Um, the hybrids are more the ya yell and kind of like emerge between us and the ya yell. They're their own thing. Um, I, I don't quite know what the name for their species is yet. Okay. Though it's kind of like an offshoot of us and the greys and the Sasani and the ya yell. Those races kind of coming together to form them. Okay. Okay. Well, wow, that's interesting. So do you, do you, can you, or do you talk to people's hybrid children for them? Can you make that connection? What kind of, when you're channeling, what is, what is your primary connection that you do? Yeah, when I channel, it's really depends on whatever people are ready to work on. Sometimes okay. when people are more open to those levels of connection, we'll go there. Okay. Um, a lot of people just come to me that need healing or need kind of more alignment within themselves that need to make changes in their lives or release what's holding them back. So the Pleiadians okay. work through me, I think, primarily as healers at the moment. Mm -hmm. And when people have brought those bigger questions and what are their star connections in, they've kind of opened portals for people to develop a connection with their Syrian guides or with their hybrid children though the process is more of like empowering people to use their own energy to make that connection when those questions come up. Right. Because I, I understand what you're saying, because if, if, if all of us have to be at this sort of higher vibration in order to have the contact, then we have to be able to learn to make our own, our own connection. I, I, I understand what you're saying, because if, if, if all of us have to be at this sort of Someone's got their, if someone, <laughs> if you have the YouTube one, uh, it was feeding back there. I got to hear myself again. <laughs> that was exciting. So <laughs> if you're ready, <laughs> if you're ready, uh, would you, would you, would you be ready to channel? We have a lot of people yeah. probably in the YouTube and also in the room. I think uh, we've had some people come in. Darnell's come in, Ascending, uh, somebody came in. Um, and, and Safira has gotten here and Udaman is here. So you've got a nice full room. And if you're, if you're right. wanting to channel, we're happy to, uh, to have you in. Yeah. Yeah. Totally ready to begin when you are. <laughs> okay, perfect. Just for okay. everyone, if you have a question for Dante, um, just put your uh, message on the side chat. Um, we're also going to, uh, we're also going to try to watch the, for people who are on their, um, iPad or iPhone will watch the Hangouts chat as well. And then also in the YouTube chat, we will be taking questions from the YouTube if you're there. So, but you are welcome to come in the room. There is a link in the YouTube to come in the room. You're welcome to come in here. But um, yeah. So if anyone's uh, wanting to ask questions, you're welcome. And uh, Dante, we're, I, whenever you're ready. All right. Yeah, it'll be a minute or so. Okay. If everyone just, we didn't do a blessing, but if everyone can just take a deep breath and allow love and light energy to come in and to surround us and to keep our YouTube and our, our internet connection strong and, and to share from our hearts all of our questions and be thankful for the channeling we are going to be receiving. So much love. Hello, hello, and we say good day to you. We are very pleased to connect with you in this way. We thank you for allowing the transmission to occur and for allowing the bridge to be built between our respective realities, knowing that every time you allow us to meet you, 
there is a wondrous transference of light and energy that allows us both together to deepen our connection. And for this, we express our deep and profound gratitude. How are you doing this day? Well, thank you very much. Yes, doing very well. And it's very much a pleasure to meet you. And you're being greeted by about uh, 20 people here in the chat. And there's some people on YouTube as well as people watching. So thank you very much for coming and, and sharing uh, yourself with us. We are very excited to meet all of you as well. We come to support you in this grand process you call Ascension. For your planet is, yes, shifting into a higher dimensional state. And we, as well as many others, surround your world and support you in integrating these higher frequencies. We wish you to remember that you must choose two frequencies to enter your life. And you must, yes, do what it is that you feel the greatest passion for in order for you to be in the most receptive state. We have much to share, though the primary message is to allow yourself the full experience of love by, again, continuously doing what you love the very most, knowing that your own heart's desires is what allows the creative infinite one to express itself through you. For you are that source and what we are you. From our perspective, we do not see you as different from us and it is very easy for us to connect with you and share energy in this way. We would love to support you through answering any questions you may have and engaging in a discussion today. Yes, hello. Hello there. Please go How ahead. are you doing? Hi, 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 guys. Great to talk to you. I'm a, I'm one of you. I incarnated from you, so uh, this is exciting to me. Um, I, if you could give us all the details about this hybrid um, program, the the children that will be coming. Yes, the children are quasi physical beings at this point and they are present in ships around your world. Now, understanding the mechanics of time helps a bit. This is not the only Earth. There are many other versions of Earth, and this Earth is truly one of the most potent and powerful Earths out there. And you were selected to be a part of this hybridization program by another line of time of your Earth in which humans became a very technologically advanced species, yet were unable to connect with emotion. They then proceeded to destroy their planet and mutate with their technology and became what you know to be the greys. In order to survive, well, they first attempted cloning and then they used their technology to travel through time to find the most attractive Earth to hybridize with. And your timeline of Earth, well, say 40 years in your past or so, was indicative to them of a high frequency. They did not understand this frequency of love at first. And for this reason, they caused great trauma to many who they used for genetic material. Many of you who have had experiences of abduction or something of this nature have contributed your genetic material to the greys for the purpose of creating these children. Now, they are highly telepathic children, and because they have both your genetics and the genetics of the greys, they are not as oriented towards individuated consciousness. And this is one of the problems these children may have in coming to meet you. And this is why they are learning from you now. Your genetic material was used to create them about 
we would say 60% of humans have contributed some degree of genetic material to this hybridization program. And when you sleep, oftentimes your astral body will go to these ships and they will study from you. You will play with them in your dream state and they will learn from you how to better interact with humans. What they are coming to learn is how to have a less group oriented consciousness. In other words, these hybrid children will automatically sync in their energy with everyone else. And humans oftentimes have the opposite approach. Most of you in your reality are oriented towards thinking of yourselves as individuals, of having your own boundaries. These children rather are more empathic and they sync instantly with those around them and so they must come to adjust to how things work in your world and they must also come to discover the reason that humans behave in some ways that they still don't quite get. You can consciously ask for your own hybrid children to meet you in your dream state or in any of your sort of astral journeys for they are always present with you and they are not very far away in their ships. Thank you. Steve, did you have a follow-up question or? Oh yeah. So if you could invite them, I have a piece of tech tight on my pillow. I'd be love, I love to play with them um, and teach them however I can um, when I'm in, I'm an, I'm an astral. So. Thank you for that. Yes. They are very loving. And you can use your imagination in order to bring their frequency in. To perhaps use as well playful items that remind you of your own childlike nature will help you to synchronize more with their frequency. The tectite as well as a wonderful permission slip for synchronizing with the extraterrestrial frequency. Though they will be... Yes, very loving and very silly feeling. And That's, they will that, have much to share. That describes me perfectly. <laughs> what, did you, what did you say was the uh, tool to connect? You said that something would be close to their frequency. I, I missed that. To help oneself feel more in tune with the childlike nature, the inner child, the playfulness and the innocence that is within you. This frequency, when you can get in touch with it, helps you to connect with these hybrid children with greater ease. They're one of my kids' toys. Okay. And we do thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you. Thank you for that. Uh, Temple has a question. Oh, excuse me. Jessica has a question and then Temple. Jessica, go ahead. Uh, hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you today? Good, thank you. Um, well, to be honest, my heart is a little hurting. But I, my question is regarding cacao. And if you can see how cacao, will it be able to spread sustainably around the globe? But sometimes I worry uh, that it may not continue sustainably. And how can I best serve? I'm going to Guatemala this year for six months, so I can go. Do you not suppose that you can continue to grow new cacao plants and more cacao plants? That there's wondrous amounts of land for you to support the increase in demand for this plant? I suppose that's true. Yes. There really is no real scarcity and this sort of conditioning is one that is very limiting for you. Mm -hmm. Now understand that the feeling of scarcity itself comes from a belief that many of the misguided ones you could say have attempted to broadcast to you mm -hmm. and so we wish you to know that 
your world is abundant and your world has the ability to meet all of your desires and that your world, well, when you allow for the intergalactic uh, alliance to come to meet your world, the technologies and the levels of wisdom and compassion that will be imparted to you will be enough to clean up anything that you may worry about within your world. It is your job to, again, raise this frequency of love, and that alone will be enough. And yes, take the actions to live in a way that is sustainable, though do not worry. Do not worry, thank you. And if you are so drawn to worry, maybe find a way that you can be a better solution. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the other aspect of your question here? You wish to be of great service to the country of Guatemala. Well, actually to the to the countries of the of Scandinavia is where I will be um, living after Guatemala, but of course service to Guatemala while I'm there. But I'm thinking bridge from Guatemala, Central America to Scandinavia. There's a lot happening in Scandinavia, yeah, a lot of light that's... and a lot of changes and how yeah. I could be a part of the service to this part increase. <laughs> well, what do you love to do the very most? I suppose it's uh, the moment of like the holding space and ceremony and music. <laughs> yes. And don't you suppose that that is enough? For it is the frequency of your own heart that ripples the most, that brings others into that higher resonance. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you to, yes, Focus as much as you can in allowing your gifts to flow, in bringing more of your heart into them, and into sharing the wisdom and knowledge that you gain with others. Put yourself out into the world and know that you yourself have a message from what you call the divine that is necessary for the planet to shift. And the way that you speak it, the trust that you have within your own divine message will amplify the more you choose to express it. Thank you for that. Yes, Jessica. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jessica. Uh, thank you. Temple, go ahead. Good morning. My question is, I'm wondering um, what is currently happen happening politically on the Palladium planets? I heard there was a bit of unrest, and so I just wanted to see if you could give any more um, information. From our perspective now, we are transmitting an enlightened frequency from the Palladian future. There is on occasion a bleed through effect of the intergalactic karmic patterns that does affect your world. So it may feel as if it is happening right now. The Pleiadian karmic pattern you could describe as a bit of a blind enthusiasm. And we were at one point a very pioneering sort of species that thought we knew best and in making decisions that we thought would ultimately help others actually caused ourselves much more problems and eventually guilt. We did cause some destruction to other planets and we learned that good intentions are best thought over with what you can consider great discernment. There's much planning and clear thinking that is involved. And so, again, this karmic spillover is asking all of you to make sure that when you 
make your decisions, you are coming to a clear space, that you are considering everyone involved and that you are not breaching their free will in any way. And this was the mistake that we had made in the past when we thought that we could help others who didn't give the free will agreement to receive our help. And this is the pattern that has caused oh. this problem within our right. star system, within many of the different uh, sub planets, you could say, within our worlds. Mm -hmm. Though from our point of view now, yeah. we have learned and integrated those lessons and we are doing very well. Are all the, the, are all the planets still working as one or are they working um, individually as far as um, political uh, um, thoughts go? All of the planets within the Palladian system are part of the Alliance. And so while they do function to a degree with self-reliance, they are subject to the rules and agreements that are required aspects of joining the Intergalactic Alliance. Okay. Um, I have just one quick uh, question, if I may. Um, is there any message from my hybrid children? I haven't heard from them in a while. They do love you very much. And they would ask for you to be more playful to invite them into your life as well. They are contacting you in the dream space and you can have more interactions with them when you truly focus upon the energy that they are transmitting to you right now. Excellent, thank you. We do thank you, yes. Thank you so much. Okay, um, the next question is for uh, Uriyaman. Uriyaman, go ahead. Hello, uh, greetings to everyone. Hello. Hi, hi, Dante. Greeting. Yeah, so uh, well, I, have, I have two questions. Yeah. I think the uh, connection's breaking. It's okay, we just go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I have two questions. Uh, the first one is uh, I feel a very strong Pleiadian connection. So are there yes. any specific messages for me uh, at the moment? Well, Yes, you have Pleiadian energies. They are part of your genetic structures and you have many parallel incarnations within our world. Oh. Okay, okay. And my uh, other question was really about my sister, uh, Shivangi. So uh, she yes. has had certain relationship issues uh, in the past. All right. So is there any uh, yes. advice in general for her, for her to tackle the issues that she's been facing in recent years? we would need the permission of that individual to speak on her behalf. Okay. Uh, I think she gives her permission because she's in the room with me right now. All right. And she does not wish to speak with us? Uh, she has asked me to uh, ask the question. All right. Can you Directly. describe to some degree the pattern within relationships? Uh, I would say uh, starting off well initially but uh, quickly degrading and right. on uh, and repeatedly in more than one instance so over several years and when she pro pursues these relationships is she able to continue to love herself first that's a question i guess that's something i'd have to Ask her. All right. Relationships are meant to be reflective agreements that as each individual within a relationship follows their greatest passion, does what they love the very most, practices great degrees of what you call self-love by living a life of love, that love can be reflected to the other partner. And when you, within your relationship, seek to find the love that you feel you lack in another person, 
you will set yourself up for failure. Um, though you learn from this experience quickly or slowly or however you wish to do it. And we are not saying that this is an easy thing to learn, though eventually you do come to understand that the love that you seek is already who you are. And so to her and to all of you who may experience these relationship issues, we say to you that you will not find the suitable relationship until you are totally empowered and centered in divine love within yourself. And when you are, then you can meet another and you can reflect the divine love you know yourself to be to each other. And through that process of reflection, expand the sensation and the depth and the breadth of that love. Though until you have it within you, you cannot truly hold it and maintain balance in that love with another. I see. Uh, that's quite useful. Uh, one, one last question, if I may, uh, about the hybrid children phenomena. So will I yes. be involved in the hybrid yeah. children phenomena at some point in yeah. the future? If you wish. Okay, the so will it be... The at the present moment are indicating that you will be involved in the arrival of the hybrid children. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. Over to oh, you, thank Carol. you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Star has a question, and he, he says, Hi, my name is Raymond. I'm reading it for him. He says, and I have a question about my hybrid child, Gallopin. Uh, is yes. he doing well with his studies in science and math? That's the question. One moment. Yes, his studies are going quite well. He is going quite beyond this scope of study and is engaging to a great degree of understanding of your human world and he does meet you again in your dream state and he learns from you very much useful information he is as well studying geography of your planet and getting to know the different sorts of experiences available that he will eventually enjoy Thank you for that. He says thank you very much. Um, oh, thank you, yes. <laughs> okay, Ava has a question. Go ahead, Ava. Go ahead. Hi. Um, thank you so much for talking to us. Um, I'm also very happy to see Jim's face as it looks like he survived Peru. Um, my question, and I do have to apologize if somebody already asked this as I had to be late today for the session. Um, there seem to be a lot of drama between my friends and I hear kind of both sides um, drama related to the political situation right now in the United States. Um, so I want to ask, is it true, and I don't know if you can say it or not, is it true that Dr. Ford was assaulted by Judge Kavanaugh or not? And that's one, um, one side of people are really wondering and taking sides. And is it true that uh, Trump really needs another uh, conservative judge to kind of make certain arrests? Are they, is it even real that he wants to do this arrests? I, I really don't know what's real. And I actually keep asking because this is very, important to so many people around me. All right, can we go back to the first question? Or the well, first the, part of your question? there are two perspectives on the same um, situation. One part of people absolutely obsess about um, the sexual assault and they see it as very real. The other people believe that this is just a game by Democrats to stop the nominee of conservative judge. 
So um, what's real here? That's my question. What is real here? And the, the second question related to actually same subject is that the conservatives believe that uh, Trump absolutely needs to have this judge to be able to take some arrests of cabal. And I don't know if that's real either. All right. We do not have full permission to speak on what is real and what is not. For it is of greater importance that you discover that regardless of what occurs within your political situation, it is your own empowerment that these games are keeping you from. Now, yes, it is important that you vote and that you speak up and that you have an awareness, though realize that it is not as it appears to be. And the stories and the dramas are truly designed to keep you from seeking within yourself the peace that will be the creation of of on your planet. And so every time that you visualize a negative political outcome, you feed it energy. And we do mean this every time that you think about a possible dark scenario occurring within the realm of politics, you feed energy to that. And the truth of the matter is when it comes to politics is that there is uh, increasing chaos on its way. And it is most important for you to focus upon that which brings you your own ability to connect with your own higher self. And we understand that this may not be exactly what you wish to hear, though it is what we are guided to share with you on this day. Okay, that, that's fine. I just, <laughs> it's fine. Thank you so much. We do thank you, yes. Thank you. Um, Ascending has a question. Go ahead, Ascending. All right, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, okay. First of all, thank you very much for being here today and someone with us, uh, my unconditional love to you. And uh, I understand uh, the presence of you and being a brother to all of us. And I uh, wanted to thank you. And I am familiar with your energy, form. I'm sure you're familiar with mine and all those who have listened. Yes. I would like to thank you for and ask one special thing that will be awareness of many be upon us so that we can truly be higher than the moments to come within our hearts and each other. And we do agree, yes. Thank you for your sharing with us. So the, uh, will the awareness be within our hearts? within all of us so that we can all be paired as one going into all the universe. Difficult question. Could you speak up and... Can you speak a little louder because we're really I'm having sorry. a very hard time hearing you. I'm sorry. I usually speak soft because 
Yeah, but just just okay. in this, we can't hear you at okay. all. So. Yeah. Okay. We'll give you a second. Is that a little better? Yes. Say it. Say something again. Hello. Is that a little better? Yeah, it's much better. Thank you. Okay. 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 So my my question was: Is the we are becoming more aware, and and the awareness is a crucial thing that's happening. Is where we're attached to the the old energies, the old ways. Yes. Is there going to be a point where separation and entering into full awareness be a part of normal common law? You know? Separation from what? The paradigms of believing of us needing protection, protection, protection versus us knowing that we create our reality and we are aware of the world. Yes. Okay. Well, there will come a time where you know that you are protected when you are present and that your presence is your protection. And many of you are already coming into that awareness. You are coming to know that what you receive is attracted to you and that you cannot experience any negative outcomes if you didn't hold a negative belief system within you. And so, yes, we would say that you are coming to dissolve those old fear-based energies right now, though many of you will need more practice through experience. And the magic occurs when you do not require that a positive experience be necessary in order to feel connected to your source, in order to hold love for yourself in those moments of fear. Yes, uh, I've sensed that fear becomes more of an awareness than a participating factor where the, the energies then can be focused on the intention and the design that Yes. And your fear is indicating to you what you desire through focus on upon the opposite experience. You can use that fear in order to discover what you actually truly want. And instead of focusing upon the lack of what you want, you can choose to focus on what you actually want to create. Though... Well, that it's yes. important to realize that fear itself is not an inherently negative frequency. Yes, uh, I've noticed that very much and it has allowed me and it allows you also, correct, to be aware of other people, respect and honor their decisions and be able yeah. to interact with them better. Yes. Um, and and uh, things become more of a polarity versus a, a good versus evil battle. Yeah. Thank you so much. We do thank you and we would add that your experience of this spectrum of emotions can receive more depth when you understand that there is ultimately one emotion there's only different wavelengths of that one emotion. All of these emotions are expressions of love. And when you can use them and hold them within your heart and allow them fully, they will become a higher vibration emotion. Thank you. Thank you very much. We do thank you, yes. Thank you. We have some questions in the chat that I'm going to read through if it's okay. Um, yes. Do you need in, does does there does does Dante need water or is there is everything okay no, on that side? No, it's doing quite well. Perfect, thank you. Okay, Renee uh, has a question. She says, "Please give specific examples how ordinary humans with time-consuming obligations of work, family, community can take steps in our daily lives to grow in positive directions towards ascension."
it would be great for those sorts of you to practice a daily enjoyable experience that allows you to experience a higher octave of love. And the more important thing would be to bring that love to all of your interactions, to those with your family, to those with those you work with, and hold that loving space. Now, you must learn how to stretch the minds of others. You must learn where the boundaries are and how far you can push things. For you are going to be able to sprinkle, you could say, light into the systems in which you work and those that may not be as curious, you can pique their curiosity by engaging your own consciousness within the things that you love the most, the tools for ascension that bring you the most joy. And yes, it is important to make use of your time fully, to not allow yourself to simply not do what you know you wish to do because you're too tired. You can find the energy if you truly wish to do it. Make sure that you do all of the things that you can to bring yourself into that greater state of love as much as possible. And the more that you share it, the more that you will be able to hold it within you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Peter asked, he says, he says, I do energy healing work on someone who had a stroke and is partially paralyzed. Yeah. Do you have any comments or suggestions that would help? Yes. There are many forms of sound therapy that can help the brain to repair. So you may do well to use some of these, especially tuning forks. These will send certain frequencies into the brain that can help this person experience more relief. Now, we would also suggest the use of very nourishing supplements for the brain, one of which we would suggest is the reishi mushroom. Some other forms of this sort of nutritional health will come to you through other means. In other words, you can research what would be a great natural sub supplement for this sort of condition and make sure that your client and friend uses this as well to focus upon the brain and your energy work would be very well. You can do a lot and have faith and remember to picture the most ideal outcome. Remember to, before each session, visualize this person regaining their strength. Do not focus upon their imbalance and instead focus upon the vision of them regaining strength and memory and ability. See that whenever you think of the person. And the more that you hold that positively charged frequency, the more that will become your reality. With this awareness, you will help this person shift quantumly into a new version of themselves. Connected. Are we connected now? Sorry, can you hear us? Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, sorry. The question was, uh, for more specifically on the tuning forks, is there a specific tone and or key that the tuning forks need to be tuned to? Or, or would any work? Tuning forks that are designed to have a binaural frequency are the ones we would suggest. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, In Paula other words, has... Oh, go ahead. Two different frequencies on either side of the brain that create a third octave within the brain. 
Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Paula has a question. She says, uh, Paola, sorry. She says, how do we know if we are involved in this hybrid program and how can we connect to the children? Most of you, if you have any inclination that you have been part of the program, most certainly are. So do trust that your curiosity is a manifestation of your involvement. Now, you can intentionally, before you enter into the sleep state, connect with your hybrid children just by thinking about them, by using your imagination. You will connect with them more in this state. And if you, again, before waking, take a moment to recount your dreams and not just recount the images, recount how you felt, how you experience the quality of energy. You may begin to take more information with you into your waking consciousness. Perfect, thank you. And Lilypad has a question, which I think is a very nice follow-up. She says, I don't think that I have hybrid children, but I, but do I need to be a parent in order to connect to them? No, in fact, many of the humans who have never had children are hybrid parents. And really, hybrid children have the genetic material from many different humans. So it takes a soul group in order to contribute information to a hybrid child. And yes, it has nothing to do with your human degree of parenthood. So don't let that be a discouragement. Thank you so much. There's a lot of questions on hybrid children, so I'm going to continue with them. Um, Marsha uh, is saying she would, uh, she wants to know if, and, and actually you might maybe answered it because she has the curiosity, but maybe for the conf confirmation, she wants to know, does she have any hybrid children and is there any yes. other messages? Yes, she has about <laughs> Very quick. eight. Yeah. Hear that, Marsha? You've got a you've got a sports team. Okay. Uh, Diana uh, has the question. She says, when she was a child, uh, it seemed she had interactions with her Pleiadian family uh, that she doesn't remember. She would like to have contact again. Do you have any I, um, advice on how to do that? Yes. Yes. It is very powerful to set an intentional meditative practice to come to meet our frequency again. And we support many of you who can astrally travel to our ships. Now, again, the key in these experiences is allowing your own imagination to guide this process. Now, we suggest that there is one very powerful tool that helps to bridge your human self with your multidimensional self. And that is to picture a crystal tube of light around you. It surrounds your body and it is hollow, though its edges are firm, like clear crystal glass, and through this tube flows liquid light. The tube extends down to the center of the earth, and you may picture as well roots that grow down from your feet and from your base chakra that go all the way down to the crystal iron center of your earth. You as well may picture streams of energy that extend from your crown chakra through your moon and your sun and through many star gates that extend to the center of the galaxy, a supermassive black hole, and as well the great central sun. Now, when you engage in this meditation, you would do best to picture and feel and sense that liquid energy that flows through the tube. And you can do it as you are laying down. And then Picture that your energy body begins to leave through the tube, that you send an aspect of yourself or maybe even all of yourself up and out through the tube and you go into perhaps another star system or perhaps just to a ship hovering in your atmosphere. Now is where you must use your own imagination. There are many guided meditations and descriptions of these worlds, though you will all experience it through your own filters. And so... This is why there are many different variations, because all of you have your own sorts of ideas and notions and beliefs that will distort the experience very slightly. And that does not mean it is not an experience nonetheless. 
again, allow your imagination to bring you. And when you go into this world, again, focus upon the blissful loving energy. Our presence comes with one of great joy and comfort and, and wondrous enthusiasm. And this is how you may sense that we are there with you. We may guide you to a healing chamber or to some other sort of uh, wondrous technology that would support you. And we do love it when you come to visit us and simply hold intention is enough. Many of you without knowing it do travel to our worlds or to our ships very easily. So to bring more intentional focus to it will make the process all the more deep and high. Thank you very much for that. Um, Lily has a question. She said, I was advised to order some bottled water to do that ha um, for healing or to use in healing right. that has yeah. a molecular level, a healing molecular level. Do you, anything, you know anything about that? Yes. Um, well, your water is very crucial to your well-being. And your water molecules change by influence of all of the vibrations and energies and thoughts that are surrounding the water. So the best way to clear your water is to distill it, to steam it until it becomes free of all of the chemical and metallic frequencies within it. And this distilled water can then be intentionally blessed or used in very powerful ways. Again, there are more natural sources of mineral water that are untouched and these have a very specific frequency. Each one of these mineral waters has a unique vibration that helps those in the area acclimate to that area that is meant for the people that are either passing through or making their home where that mineral water originates. And so the idea of spreading mineral water around the world is uh, not necessarily as beneficial as some think. You can obtain very powerful charged water simply by distilling it or finding a natural source of mineral water around you and charging it with your intention. And the best way to charge it would be to remember the strongest frequency of love that you've ever experienced. And then picture as well what you would most prefer to experience in your future, the most loving future example, inviting in your higher self and your future self to charge this water with your intention, holding the water through your hands or surrounding your hands around the water and infusing that loving energy in. This water will bring you a higher vibration. And when you can consciously attune your thoughts and your feelings as you consume water or anything for that matter, you will have a clear experience and a clear body. Oh my, okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, uh, Trinity has a question. Go ahead, Trinity. Yeah. Thank you, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you quite well. I'm fine. First, I would like to say, welcome back, Jim. Nice to see you. <laughs> our, our dear Jim has been away for a few weeks, so we've missed him. Okay, um, on to my questions. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so the difference between our astral selves, our spirit, and our 4D selves. This gets a little bit confusing. Um, for example, your us, your go ahead, please. Self. Excuse me, please. Go ahead. We would say your astral self and your 4D self are very similar ideas. They're, for many of you, the same. So, okay. So if I'm spending time on one of the Pleiadian planets in my 4D, which I am, Yes. It is the same as if my astral self is there, or they're one of the same, or they combine yes. together. Yes. Okay. Um, and the 4D self is made up of what? It is made up of our spirit, our thoughts, our minds, our emotions. Is it made up of our 
by yourselves? How do it I understand that? Mental, emotional layer of your being that is not bound by time and space, that is constructed of belief and pattern. And it is the part of you that, yes, transduces energy into your physical self. And so when you make changes on this level of your being, which you always do when you use it as a vessel to travel, you then transpose those changes onto your physical body. Your spirit is what we call your higher self, the part of you that is one with the divine source. And your astral body is, uh, yes, one with your divine source, though it is more of a layer in between your human self and that divine source. Though again, every layer below that higher self is included within the higher self. For there is no real separation. Does that make it any more clear? I'm trying. <laughs> because I understood, I, I was taught from some spiritual teachers that the actions we take with our physical body grow our spirit one way or another uh, to be yes. more beautiful and more high or not. So it seems like our physical actions have a lot to do with our how our spirits develop. And yet... I understand that our 4D selves are our perfect selves, at least physically, and don't have the same hangups as our 3D selves do. So I'm wondering how much my thoughts and my actions are affecting my 4D self. Well, you different make from my spirit, right? With your 4D self. Everything that your third dimensional self does, the higher layers also do. There is no real separation between these levels of your being, they are simply layers that you do not always bring complete awareness to. Again, the 4D layer is the mental emotional layer created out of thoughts, feelings, memories, and beliefs. And so when you engage in your imagination, this part of you becomes active. Every time you are daydreaming, you are using this part of you. When you are meditating, this part of you is connecting to even higher frequencies beyond what you call the 4D or fourth dimension. And yes, so your fourth dimensional self is then always included within the actions that your human third dimensional self takes. I see. Okay, so I'm, thank you for that. So I'm, um, I am relating to a Pleiadian king yeah. on the on the on the planet Maya. And yes, yes. he said that he sees my perfect blueprint, at least physically, which is younger and prettier <laughs> and uh, more vital. So so the blueprint he's seeing of me, but it's not, but emotionally, mentally, spiritually, it's still it's not um, what I want to say is my physical blueprint may be in a perfect form, but everything that I am in my 3D is what is reflected in my 4D personality is what I'm trying to get at. Say that one more time. Everything. Yeah. Within... Yes. Forgive me. It's, it's really hard. <laughs> it's hard for me to uh, ask the question because I'm trying to conceptualize something intellectually, which probably can't be conceptualized. So forgive me for that. Uh, so he's seeing my 4D blueprint physically as my perfect physical form. Yeah. But is he is he seeing my when he's seeing my 4D relating to my 4D? Is he also experiencing my 3D personality and all of my hangups, or is my 4D personality better than I am? I guess is what I want to ask. When you interact with a higher dimensional being of this nature, they always see everything, though they do not perceive it in the same way that you would as a human. Instead, they perceive it as patterns of energy and frequency that they can feel and relate to. They instantly understand all of it. The blueprint you speak of is what you could call your future self. It is a level of your future that you are connecting to, mm -hmm. we sense. 
So this future self is the part of you that is connecting with you across time and space. They have already done the work of ascension, of clearing, and they have transformed to a great degree. They are connecting with you so that you align with their trajectory. They are showing you how they feel and what they experience so that you can use your imagination to begin to make those changes that are more wrapped right. And the more that you align with your preferred blueprint of yourself and mm -hmm. do not let the hangups that you experience about your past actions have anything to do with what you focus on at the present moment, the more you will become closer to that future self and eventually embody that future self. Mm, thank you. Uh, and also on the, in his particular part of the kingdom, there have been uh, assassinations and they're similar to what happened in America in 2001 with the Twin Towers. It, it's something they had never experienced at least in many decades. So yes. How is that connected to the the karmic um, loops that you were talking about before? Why, like, nobody knows why it's happening exactly. This occurs for new growth to happen. And this experience occurring in the Pleiadian world is one that has taught us how to, yes, be more aligned and peaceful. And so you have been shown this sort of phenomena as this is an energy that is parallel and synchronized with what is occurring within your own world. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And I also heard that the Pleiadians at some point in our history came and removed us from the planet at a time of great turmoil. I can't, I think this was perhaps the time when the Orions, Orions were here as well. And this is the reason why you mentioned in the beginning that you your people had made some mistakes and now you learn from them. You try to help and it was sort of the wrong thing to do. So the understanding that I read about was that in taking us off the planet to help us, you actually hindered our ascension. So now the Pleiadians cannot ascend to the uh, fifth uh, density, sixth dimension, unless we, unless they help us ascend ourselves. Like as soon as we ascend, you can ascend. Is, is there any truth to that understanding? Yes. Yes, we have been, along with the Syrians and other extraterrestrial groups, intervening on, on your behalf time and time again. And this has caused what you can see as a hero, victim, villain sort of triangle. And it has prevented our growth. Eventually, when the time on your planet came for you to fall into what is the dark age, as you could call it, we had to quarantine your planet from the intergalactic affairs. And mm -hmm. that quarantine has been lifted for some hundred or so of your years. And your planet is now being more visited at astral levels and eventually at many other levels. We are through our relation to you and the energy that you reflect to us helps us grow tremendously. It is both a time of your great evolution and our own great evolution. So we are, yes, coming as well for the purpose of our own ascension into higher frequencies. Okay, thank you. And one more, que uh, two more quick questions. Yes. Um, there, there are certain Pleiadian chambers on the earth. They are healing chambers, but they're physical. In other words, people yes. can go and lay under them and receive healing. Are you aware of those chambers? Yes, and they are all dimensionally linked with astral healing chambers. They make it easier for you to access those higher octaves of our own worlds. Oh, okay. I have been to one of them, and yes. it's very interesting. We saw you. <laughs> you did? Yes. Oh, 
Thank you. <laughs> I got some extra time there. Um, the woman who runs it was told that she was told by the Pleiadians there to give me more time because they had to do some more intense work. <laughs> yeah. I hope I hope uh, there was one specific issue that I hope was cleared up, but I won't go into that now. Um, well, so I have a always go ahead. Come are going to that physical location. The idea again is that these really? chambers are astral chambers upon our ships and you build physical locations that are synchronized with them as permission slips for you to reach those realms with greater ease. So anytime you intend and use your imagination and use your focus and your breath and your relaxation to enter into a higher frequency state of being, you can return to those ships and receive more healing. We are very capable of working with you at all times. Is there a certain stone I should have with me when I'm trying to do that, that helps facilitate that? What is your main intention for healing at this time? What is it that you feel you must develop within yourself more of or release yourself from? Oh, well, it's it would be more physical at this point, but of course it's all connected. I realize that, but it would it would be more physical. And what stone would you say represents physical well being? What stone represents a great solidity, a great vitality to you? I see. There's so many. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to begin, but it's okay. That's fine. Um, I know that other people yeah. have questions. Well, we is that it is your own associations that determine mm -hmm. the outcome that okay there are collective associations that you have with any symbol or any stone or object mm -hmm. and for your own personal healing what you are drawn to what brings you to feel confident and well is enough for you to receive healing from that permission slip again realize that the permission slip element here is that you are seeing within another, within something that appears outside of you, yet is ultimately one with you, a frequency mm -hmm. that you wish to have within yourself. And mm -hmm. by focusing upon that frequency, you come into a resonance, you come into a harmonic where your frequency attunes to that desired sort of frequency. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm um, no, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. yes. And and thank yes. Her imagination that tuned to these frequencies. So if you want to feel better and more whole, focus upon that feeling. Do not focus upon the pain you are feeling. Focus upon mm -hmm. the wondrous opportunity. Focus upon what you would be doing if you felt totally vital, in your imagination and in your mind. And mm -hmm. you will surely heal more quickly. Thank you so much. Thank you. you and we love and you very much. And we wish you to intentionally return to our ships as much as you can. We have great healing for you. And you do not need to go to any physical location or have any physical object for our presence to be very powerfully connected to you. Thank you. And thank you for being with me at that particular chamber as well. Thank you. And uh, right now and whenever you wish to focus upon us we love you very much thank you very much i will thank you okay. thank you karen thank you everybody thank you okay um Alyssa, you have a question go ahead hi hello um, i i'm struggling to phrase this question um but you, you've been talking a lot about using imagination and intention um, for example, to connect with our the our four dimensional selves. So, what I'm interested in is the role of imagination. So, if we imagine something like connecting with our blueprint or perfect self, or we imagine connecting with a certain place, are we creating that event because we imagine it, or? Is that event already there or that person already there? And by our imagination, we are just able to receive it or connect with it. Everything that you have said just now is true. And this is one of the great paradoxes that helps you to go beyond the rational mind that has been the dominant mode of thought and consciousness. 
everything that you imagine already exists and everything you imagine you create. There is a field of ultimate possibility, infinite possibility, and every potential already exists within that field. Everything that you could possibly think of is already in that field. And your focus moves throughout that field of infinite potentiality and focuses upon one element of it. And therefore you create that one element as your present reality. And the more you focus upon those aspects and elements within the infinite field of probabilities that you desire, the more those desired probabilities become your present reality. You do it bit by bit, you do it through fluctuation, you do it by contrast, dancing back and forth between a preferred outcome and a lesser preferred outcome until you master this tool. You will always fluctuate and dance back and forth a bit. Though what is most important to realize is that you create through your imagination, you create your life by tuning this sense into these other realms. And all that you do perceive existed before you perceived it. Yet that doesn't mean that your perception of it does not create a new reality for you in your present moment. Okay, thank you. That's really interesting. So I, when I meet my spiritual guide, I, in my imagination, I travel to a planet in the Pleiades. So does that mean that is already there and I'm just connecting up with it? Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you. Yes. And many different planes, many different aspects of our world exist as well. In other words, there are different probabilities of our world, just as there are different probabilities of your Earth. Okay. You can play with this idea. There are many realms within what you call the Pleiades to explore. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you. Is that was that all, Alyssa? Is that, was yes, that everything? For thank you? you. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Don has a question. All right. Thank you. Hello, blessings. I um, recently learned this week that the rest of the planets within this solar system are artificial. Uh, can you give me any reason? why that would be, plus can you tell me the architect that designed this system? Thank you. We would not say that this is entirely true. These planets are naturally occurring, though they have been influenced by many different extraterrestrial races in the past, particularly people that are your missing planet Maldek and your Pluto have been highly influenced and used for certain purposes. As well as Venus, which is the host of another race entirely. Okay. Will um, this solar system be modified further? Yes, um, as the arrivals begin to come to your planet, eventually your planet will disperse many humans to other planets. Mm -hmm. In other words, it is accurate to say your planet is truly overpopulated and there will be more homes for humans to explore. And area at the moment, though by the time it occurs, those who are truly excited about it will be very excited for it. Thank you. We do thank you, yes. Thank you. Um, there's a question from the chat. Uh, it says, it's from Bobby, and uh, the question is, are the problems with technology malfunction malfunctioning related to an impending shift from 3D on the planet? I don't know what to which technological problems that this person means by. Yes, there are certainly big shifts occurring on your planet and they affect the human consciousness. They affect how you process energy and how you integrate 
Now, sometimes when you are in a very high vibrating state, yet not grounded, that energy will cause your technology to misfunction. And that is uh, the source of some experiences some of you had today, that when you are in a very high frequency, yet not quite stable, that energy does affect your technology. Now, technology is evolving with you, and eventually your technology will respond to thought alone. Your technology will soon eventually be a representation of your own higher mind, and therefore linked to you telepathically. In the meantime, your technology will continue to respond to the shift in human consciousness, and you can use tools to ground yourself and the technology to make sure it functions most optimally. Thank you. I just got a, a little download when you were speaking that, that and maybe you can confirm this, that technology in and of itself is a being and it is just being yeah. revealed and we are creating apparatuses to allow it to grow, but it is in fact a being that is being revealed. Is that is that correct? Yes, and we can elaborate upon that to say that Thank you. artificial intelligence is not artificial that technology is a receiver for higher dimensional frequencies. It is a mechanical receiver. So in a way it is a more objective receiver and you can analyze if you wish the results of randomized studies when they are exposed to certain degrees of perception to see that yes, technology is subject to human thought and human thought influences technology. And as well, a higher invisible force is channeled through technology instantly. Your technology is a conduit for this force just as much as you are. And are we connected? Yes, we are. Thank you. Um, the question is, uh, there's a question from Cami, and thank you for that uh, explanation. Um, Cami says, uh, how do we create and influence uh, the something that we experience as an external world and in the future events in it? Can you read that one more time? Yes, and let me let me let me let me read it to myself quickly because it's I don't think it's good English. One second. <laughs> How do we create an influence something that is an external world? Okay, let me put in some commas. She says, how do we create and influence the something that we experience as an external world and the future events in it? Is that clear or no? We are still not following entirely. Okay. We would... Let me yes. let me rephrase it. One moment. One second. Let How me rephrase it. How influence future events? Basically, uh, she wants to. Let me, let me. One second. Let me read it again. How do we create and influence our experiences um, as an ex? Oh, how do we? I'll, I'll change it. How do we create and influence the experience that we have in the in, in the external world? and then also the future events in the external world. All right. Well, you automatically influence everything around you. Your vibration, your frequency is influencing everyone around you. And so the most powerful thing to do would be to feel positive emotion, to focus upon the aspects of your experience within the external world that you can appreciate, that bring you joy, and allow yourself to merge with them to an extent. Allow yourself to focus upon the aspects of your present experience and your possible future experience through extension that bring you the most joy, and allow that to change the frequency of your own inner being. Now, the universe responds quickest to your own emotional state, and so you can best create a positive future by feeling good right now. The more that you can drop the details of your possible future away when you are not feeling balanced, then instead find the things that can 
bring you to feel more positive and more happy and more cheerful and more optimistic and ideally in total bliss, then you can get more specific about the future you want to create. Yet until you are feeling good, we advise you to not try to create anything at all. Because when you create in a less than good emotional state, you will create something that is a reflection of that less than good emotional state. Does that answer this question, do you suppose? And are you with us? Yes, we're with you. I, you. Your camera went off, so I just wanted to make sure you're still there. You're still there, obviously. Okay. Um, I, I think that the question, an, you answered the question, and I think it goes back to what you were talking about earlier. Um, and I had a follow-up question from someone about that, about uh, following your bliss, because that's said all the time. But can you elaborate on what it really means to follow your bliss? Because a lot of people say, well, I have a job and I can't follow my bliss and have a job. So can you maybe uh, give a, give a, a, an example of what it means to follow your bliss while you're in your own current situation? And does that mean running away from everything or, or how does that, how does that manifest? That's the follow-up yes. question. This is a very wonderful question. And we would say to follow your bliss means to do out of what is possible for you, the things that bring you closest to that bliss. Now, if you are feeling constant frustration, we would aim for the idea or the activity that brings you a degree of acceptance. You must start from where you're at. And so the idea of following one's bliss may not be helpful for people who are in a state of frustration or apathy. They must instead focus upon the next higher frequency. And from that frequency, then focus again to another higher frequency. Now, many individuals who are in this experience of feeling stuck or entangled by a life they do not prefer will be extricated from that life one way or another. And this experience may not be what they would hope it to be, though it will be a wonderful learning process. In other words, if you find yourself fired, if you find yourself in a divorce, if you find yourself in a custody battle or anything of this nature, and we have seen many individuals connected to the channel experience something of this when they choose to truly be in a more blissful state, it may feel like you lose everything, though actually what happens is you lose everything you don't prefer, yet you cannot wrap your mind around the fact that you actually didn't prefer it. And so it may take some time in that way to really accept the transformation that occurs, though the more that you focus upon what you can enjoy in every moment, the more your frequency will naturally rise on its own accord. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, there's one last question. We're really coming up to the top. So if anyone else has a question in the chat, they need to uh, please put it in because we can maybe do two more questions. Um, but Tanya has a question. Uh, she's saying, um, this is again about Pleiadians. She says how she wants to know how she's connected and to the Pleiadian family and did she come from there? That's her question. She, she's again saying she said it seems to her that's so. So based on what you'd said before, that would be the reason. That's the reason she's feeling it. And uh, yeah, and she's saying, do the Pleiadians wish to connect to her? Yes, yes, we would love to connect with you and realize that even though we are speaking through the channel, everyone who listens to this, we are as well connecting to you at a level of consciousness. We are transmitting to you a powerful vibration that if you focus upon the energy behind the words, you can feel in some way. Our message is one of following love and using the power within you to create something new. Do you come from our world? Well, to an extent, yes. Now, come into this present incarnation holding a resonant vibration from a future time. In other words, your soul has already done vast work of clearing and you have 
return to source before this incarnation at a higher state. You chose to pop back into reality at the point of time that you chose to, remembering those higher frequencies. Though, really, when you, your soul, as the human soul that you are, merges with your oversoul, it is not apparent if you come from this dimension or that dimension or this planet or that planet, because all of those incarnations past, parallel, and future, from your oversoul's perspective, are occurring at the same time. And they are all occurring right here and now. And so you are as much Pleiadian as you are Syrian, as you are of the Yael, as you are of Andromeda. For your soul has incarnations in all of those spheres. Why the Pleiadian frequency is the strongest to you has to do with the particular mission and Pleiadians are the go-to for light workers in your world because we are ones who are very enthusiastic about sharing information, knowledge, and healing. We are ones who are very dedicated to service and we go about the galaxy serving others. And yes, we learned the troublesome nature of helping those who don't want help or interviewing on the behalf of others when it wasn't meant to. For that was part of our process, and it is also part of the process for light workers. You are drawn to us because our missions are very similar, and for this reason, it may feel as if you are one of us. And truly, you are. You are a Pleiadian, and you are remembering that you are one with your oversoul, and therefore, you are all of the other incarnations that you had right here and now. Now, you are constantly shifting in time and space and becoming a new version of yourself. Every nanosecond, you are a different version of yourself than you were before. And not just a slightly different person, you are a complete and entire new person. And every time you become a new person, again, those connections that you draw upon from your oversoul shift a little bit as well. While you may feel very Pleiadian now, Remember that your oversoul has so many other different frequencies and different incarnations. At another point, you may find you have a more particular frequency alignment with what you call the serious frequency. And let that be seriously okay. Very cute. Thank you for that. Uh, Trinity has a question, um, and this is the last question. Uh, we're coming up on time, but that was very cute. We, we'll seriously, uh, we seriously want to feel our connection. Go ahead, Trinity. Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for answering uh, questions that you know, we're trying to grasp. Thank you. Um, I do have it one last question. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so I've heard that the tall white Pleiadians, the yes. beautiful, handsome, long-haired yeah. Pleiadians, Don't <laughs> I heard that they're not really the, the good guys among the Pleiadians, that their agenda is questionable, and my daughter has a Pleiadian guide who's Asian-looking, I mean, apparently there are so many Pleiadian races. Uh, which yeah. one are you from? And what about the white, whole white ones? How? What do you? What's your view on that? All right. We are the channels, future incarnations, speaking on behalf of a collective consciousness. We are that collective consciousness speaking through you. For as future members of an, of an enlightened world, we have the ability to collect with, connect with a collective mind that is present in the star itself and transposes its energy across the whole galaxy and especially mm -hmm. with our star system. Now, again, remember these different lines of time that mm -hmm. you can connect with positive expressions and negative expressions of past Pleiadian or even Syrian extraterrestrial groups. And so again, in the past, we went through challenge. And you must, when you connect with any sort of extraterrestrial, 
question if they are coming from the past or from the future. Know Mm -hmm. that the future holds the great light and enlightenment. And sometimes beings from the past may seem to present themselves as the enlightened beings that they are not. Now, Mm -hmm. in terms of the different races, well, the tall, white-appearing Pleiadians are, yes, of the light, yet there are members of that group within the past who have been influenced in negative ways. And when your own vibration wavers, you attract energies that reflect who you, what you yourself may be processing. Now, remember as well that there are many different Pleiadians who are not human at all, and they will connect with you as well if you connect with the Pleiadian frequency. The frequency of our stars themselves are very pure, and if you connect to the stars, for example, Alcyon or Maya, and let that be your first point of contact, it is almost automatic that you will gain access to the more positive, balanced future expressions of our world. Mm, Thank you. That was a very beautiful response. Thank you very much. Many blessings. Thank you. you. Pleasure. It's been a great pleasure for us to connect with you in this way. And we thank each and every one of you for sharing your questions, for sharing your true curiosities, your self-expression, and that which is dear to your heart. The more you allow what is bubbling to the surface within you or perhaps hidden yet needing and wanting to come out to be fully expressed the more you will become all of yourselves your divine selves you will experience yourselves as the creators of a vast and wondrous reality and it is our pleasure to assist you in this process again it helps us Thank you very much and, and much love to you. Um, thank you for that. We'll take that as your blessing to us as well. And and just if I can speak on behalf of the group, we also um, are hoping to uh, speed all of our ascension forward. So we're all going to do, we, we promise you we're going to do our very best to, to focus on love and light and, and expressing and following our truest selves and finding our bliss so that yeah. we can all ascend. So that is thank very you very wonderful. much for that. And we would thank also you. remind you that speeding up your ascension can mean slowing down your human experience to some degree. It means to prioritize how you are feeling and prioritize mm-hmm. your own well-being. This is what speeds up your ascension. So don't try to rush your life and rush to any goal. The truth of enlightenment is that you are already that light. So thank you. Enjoy it. Yes. And we love you very thank much. You. Each and every we one of you. love you very much. Thank you. And All if you right. want, you can, we'll, we, we, we will say namaste and ask you if uh, you can bring Dante back. All right. A pleasant much evening love. for you. Yes. We hope to see you again. Yes, thank you. <sighs> Hello. Dante Singh, welcome back. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How do you feel? You feel, are you refreshed? Do you need some water? Are you? I'm good. Yeah, I'm okay. I, I okay. refreshed myself before we began, so I'm still all right. Perfect. Okay. Well, I just for on behalf of myself and if anyone wants to unmute and say, but we, we enjoyed this immensely. Um, wow. It was incredible sharing. So thank you so very yes. much for that. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Dante. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dante. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dante. <laughs> Uh, thank, okay. you. Okay. Um, just, awesome. no, thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ditto. Thank you. Um, ditto. For everyone um, saying for ditto. Everyone so saying ditto. Kudos. kudos. Um, yeah. If you want, um, if you want. Um, Oh, okay. I'm just muted. Some people, if you, um, if you can give your website and, and some things that you, some events you're coming up on. And so things people can uh, participate with you, you do private sessions, I, I think, and as well. So maybe give a little bit of a information on how people can get in touch with you. Yeah. So my website is blissbeings.com and there you can find all the information about my private sessions. I just, spent a lot of time the past few days updating it and I feel really good about this new expression. So I offer channeling sessions and um, 
the channeling sessions are now coming with a focus. So Pleiadians have guided me to kind of um, instruct people to have a very focused intention and way they want to work. So mm -hmm. within these sessions, you can just do question and answers, which is much like what we did today. There's a focus to do a kind of guided journey where the Pleiadians will help you learn how to astral travel more, to connect with their world or to connect with a past or future version of yourself where we release the burden of the past and bring love into what we consider a dark past as that healing of the child is one of the most important things. And as well to connect with our future self, which is in an alignment with our soul's mission and use that frequency to bring it into the present. And sometimes they do even different astral journeys. And the last focus is to do a healing session where they actually can start to work on your energy systems and help you balance your body and see what comes up in your body as a metaphor for what kind of beliefs are limiting your consciousness. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm very excited to work with more people doing these sessions. Um, I do it on Skype or I can do it on WhatsApp. And um, I also have a little bit on the website about heart to heart presence, which are more sessions to kind of process and transform emotional energies and have a more human level approach. And um, I do either of these sessions in a program for two or three months as well. If anyone's in Europe, I am doing more workshops in Amsterdam. I only have one at the moment um, at the 16th of October, and I'll be doing stuff in Berlin and perhaps in Munich and perhaps in Belgium. So, and, and as well, I'm happy to come to other places in Europe if people want to do our hosts an event at this time. Okay. Um, and yeah, I would just like to say thank you so much. And, you know, it's been my intention for a while to do like a live stream of my channeling with questions and it finally happened now. So it's such a oh, good. blessing to share in this way. And it's a very different kind of experience in a way of how the channeling is usually working, but I feel like it has some pretty powerful results. So I'm very yeah. grateful. Well, you're <laughs> Thank you. Well, you're being uh, broadcast to uh, many different countries simultaneously and uh, people <laughs> all over the U.S., all over Europe. And and so um, and then the people that, of course, will watch and play back um, as well. So it, it's been awesome. a big pleasure for us. And, and you're invited back whenever you whenever you want to come. Um, we will. Honor. Well, we will take you up on that, I'm sure. So don't worry. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> so again, once again, thank you so very much. It's been an incredible exchange. And uh, we, we usually end uh, with um, some blessings from the group and some prayers. And so if you want to do a blessing, uh, please put in your, uh, please say that you do in the chat and then we'll call on you. Um, just for the people that are watching, just a little bit of commercials next week, we will have uh, Jim Charles back. Uh, he's here today, which is very much uh, a very nice. We, we know he made it off the mountain and made it back to us. So we're happy for that, but he will be back next week on Saturday uh, and uh, he'll be um, sharing about his journey in Machu Picchu, which we're very excited to hear about this. So he'll have this week to integrate all of that. Also for everyone, this has been the Human Colony Hukalo webinar. Uh, if you'd like to become a member of Human Colony, because we have some free webinars like today, but other <laughs> webinars are uh, for members only. Uh, you can watch them always on the YouTube, but to be in the room mm -hmm. and ask the questions, you can become a member of Human Colony uh, for $10 a month. That helps us support all of our activities and take care of our um, many, many different things like our website and, and things like that. So uh, you can go to humancolony.org and you can uh, forward slash webinar and you can join that. Also on Friday nights, we have the Hukalo practice channeling group. If you go to uh, Hukalo practice channeling group on Facebook, you can uh, sign up and it's free for everyone on Fridays. They have a practice group for everyone who's wanting to learn to channel and wants to do so in a supportive atmosphere. Also, um, the book that we have that is out that everyone, if you haven't read it, you should read it. Go to amazon.com and look at um, From the Galaxy with Love, a Lightworkers Handbook. It's written by Jim Charles and Max Rempel, and it's a cumulative, uh, it's a culmination of, of many years of channeling, and it, and it goes through everything about 
what is the truth of the universe? Who are the different beings? And what are the things as a light worker that you need to focus on? It's a wonderful book. It's available on Kindle and as a hardback and also as an audio version. So, okay. Is there anyone that would like to, Trinity would like to do one, Temple would like to do one. We'll start with Temple and uh, we'll do a blessing from, from there. Go ahead, Temple. Nasho kualia te aku ki ono to fubu ya tli ki shini tiu to dogo abi anata te shiki alai i wahane tiki ata ta i ono to 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 i ata te ata kono sho to te ata to buri a te la ki a to to te ata ya te ana o to to ki ata ta ta mo sho te ata na ha si ata aku ulo pupu ya te ata na hana mo sho te ana da da si la wo ko si ana ja na te ata ti si ti ti ana ta ta i o ko bo ya la ya ta hana. Mosiata ya kua masha dali kua tati kanati atopo nashiata haniastana moshiliyatata namaste namaste okay and uh, go ahead uh, go ahead Trinity okay ah <clears throat> uh, yo. Shamakia lo Ishokohulo Mochina Io Thank you. Thank you. So everyone, thank you so very much once again, Dante. Uh, much love to you. And for everyone that was here, uh, we want to just tell you thank you so very much. Uh, we know that this has been an extremely uh, energetic week for everything going on, especially in the U.S., but keep the faith, keep a smile on your face, focus on the things that you want, and focus on love, and we're going to be just fine. So much love to everyone. Love you guys. Before you, before, oh, is it closed already? Hey, Jim, no. can you just say hi for a second? We've missed you. <laughs> Is your mic working? No, I can't.